Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. No, none taken. That is right, none taken. Uh, I am the Movie Moron. This is the Movie Moron Podcast. I am your host, Easton Moore. Attention, idiots. <laughs> um, and then with us, as always, uh, after his one-week hiatus, uh, is our practical co-host himself, Trevor. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch it. It's true. Um, and then our all-time guest, Tristan. I'm going to die surrounded by the biggest idiots in the galaxy. Those are pretty Those good. Those were great, yeah. Good, good. Okay, um, <laughs> and if you can't tell from the theme of our audio drops, it is going to be um, Guards of the Galaxy, um, Volume 3. Uh, James Gunn is back, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. He's back. Um, to do the last installment, because he didn't, did he? He did one and two, and then he got into the hot water with his Twitter stuff. Yeah. And then, But then the uh, the cast of this movie were like, no, like if he if we're gonna do volume three, he needs to be back. Yeah. And so, as a sign of good faith, the uh, Marvel him back. Yeah, yeah. brought him back uh, to do this one. Although I think he's doing this and then out. Yep, because um, he's moving on to DCU. And uh, so is Dave Bautista. He was also like, when James Gunn is done, then I'm done. And all right, good for him because he's been getting work. He's been doing good good stuff. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna kick off our general thoughts. You guys can say what you think of the. Previous films, like just say whether you liked them or disliked them, um, and then you can get into your your general thoughts. So, Trevor, I'm going to do a sh- shameless plug real quick. We happen, oh, yeah, yeah, on a just do Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. on a on a, my other podcast, deconstructing the MCU. We just did Guardians of the Galaxy one this week. So if you want to go back and see if that movie is and a, a, a spoiler alert, it, it's pretty good. It's uh, not. The best it's not the worst i think we both put it like right in the middle of our list so far but yeah so you can find that on apple Podcasts or spotify you can start the mcu we did a guardians of the galaxy episode but for volume three oh and sorry i i like them both i like the guardians movies they're fun uh easton you and i have talked about how they um uh, they, oh, they kind of find their formula. They kind of, the MCU in general kind of finds its footing with the Guardians in terms of like what fans want in terms of humor and in terms of story. And so th- this set the pace for that. And I think they did good. I like the first one quite a bit. The second one is okay. I like Kurt Russell. I like Ego. I thought that that was a really big swing they took and I thought they got... I thought they did well for the most part. But I think this one's better than two. I think if I had to rank them, I'd go one, three, two. Um, but no, everyone, the actors that are not mocap in this, so that's uh, Chris Pratt, Karen Gillian, uh, and then the woman that plays Mantis. I can't think of her name. And then Dave Bautista. They all have really great moments of acting in this. And then yeah. the guy that plays the high evolutionary Ikuwu, I think is his last name. Um, His acting is phenomenal. Just that he, because he doesn't necessarily, not just like speaking acting, but he, with his body movements, really does a good job portraying like the high pompous, tall scientist turn creator guy, you know, full of himself. And then in like a, a posture change, he'll go to this psychopathic, don't talk back to me kind of mentality. And it, it really phenomenal, like really great work uh, from him in this. And I think that because he does so good, that really is like the sparkle that makes this movie great. And then of course we get my favorite, one of my favorite bands of this the Beastie Boys, that no sleep till Brooklyn moment is incredible. That's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. That was probably the highlight of the Guardians movie always has was. to have one of those moments. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it did better in um Secret Life of Pets, but All right, we're back. <sighs> we're uh, we had to do a little uh <laughs> audio thing. Tristan's cord was making a noise. So we got that fixed. Sorry for the little buzz you heard when uh Trevor was talking. But um yeah, we're talking about No Sleep Till Brooklyn, and yeah. Tristan added mm-hmm. that um, she seeing... She Secret Life of Pets did it better. <laughs> oh, Secret Life of Pets, <laughs> yeah. not saying. Okay, yeah, did it better. Yeah. 
A Groot, I think, looks great, and I like this adult Groot. I, yeah, I, uh, I do too. Yeah, he and he, I, the I could do without the vines slithering out of him yeah. sometimes. <laughs> That's a little much, but no, I thought he a and too creepy for you. What was really great was that we get to see him. There's one particular action sequence where we get to see him do a bunch of stuff we've seen before, but uh, all all at once and in kind of a new way. Yes, I, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, which is which cool. is really cool. Um, and then uh, there's this. If you, I will say, if you have trouble with animal cruelty, maybe just be aware of that when you go into this movie. Yeah, it, it's a really. I think it was a really easy. <laughs> pull on us to like make us hate the villain more yeah. and that was like a marketing campaign they were doing they were like this is somebody mcu direct or someone said something like uh this is the, easily the most hated villain of all the mcu so far and it's pretty obvious why you know they it's yeah. it's a low-hanging fruit and they definitely go for it but yeah and it works well i guess it does. yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's an easy setup, and it's it, and it they, does it well. Is what I'm trying. Yeah, to say. and they don't so. fumble it. So, and it doesn't feel it doesn't necessarily feel shoehorned or mm -hmm. like I don't think so it doesn't either. feel like they're like, well, we're just doing this so that we can get some sentiment and some emotion. Like they're definitely doing it, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel extremely obvious and like at least it feels at least semi well. Yeah, to where it does. and there is there is even with that there's a moment where I was like, oh. We're doing that then. Uh, yeah. Uh, the guy from the Where the Millers meme is in this, yeah. and it took me a minute to figure out who he was. But the He's also in uh, uh, Voyage of the Dawn Shredder. Oh, okay. Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was Maze in Runner. Maze Runner, that's what it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw he was in another movie recently yeah. that I hadn't seen. Maze Runner trilogy. And he was in some other stuff too. Yeah. But yes, he's most popular from his... We are the Millers and big balls meme. Yes. Oh, I was thinking of the, you guys are getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, yeah. No, he did good playing a big dumb baby. So no, overall, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Sweet. Tristan, what were your general thoughts? Yeah, I liked it. It felt a little long. How long was it? Two and a half hours. Two and a half. Yeah. That tracks. Yeah. And I, just because we know these characters already, it felt it feels long. I was just like expecting there to be a conclusion, and then it, I was like, "Oh, there's more. We're still going." <laughs> but the epilogue feels long. Oh, the long. I think I is agree. is kind of a piece of it, but it feel I feel like they decided to make it long purposeful because I think like. They've already said, like, James Gunn isn't coming back. Dave yeah. Bautista is not coming back. So, like, they, they don't know what the future of these characters are. So, I think they decided to take a moment. Except for one, there is an end credit scene. That, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So it's, I was just stating, I'm trying not to sure, be too sure. specific, just stating, like, I think that they know that this is the wrap for some people. And mm -hmm. so, they wanted, they wanted to take the moment to have, like, a real conclusion for everyone. And, I mean, there's still obviously open doors. Yeah, um, for some of the characters, but they, I think that's why they took the time. I think so too. And maybe James Gunn was also kind of that was kind of his piece too mm -hmm. of like, I know I like he knows he's done with the MCU because he's now in the DCU. Yeah, so I right in a Superman movie. Yep, Superman Legacy. <laughs> but yeah, other so than that. anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't a detriment. I didn't hate it that it was that long. I was just kind of, I was just kind of like, yeah. It just kept going. You dozed off, yeah, towards the end a little bit. I also, I just let myself get too comfy. <laughs> I can't do that. Um, stop taking the blanket in with you. I can't stop. <laughs> it, it's too cold. She and then if you're stop. watching a movie, can't stop, won't stop. If you're watching a movie, and you're freezing cold, it you can't enjoy the movie because I'm so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh. Um. Okay. What else? I yeah. I I think. I think I saw the first one a few times. I've only seen the second one one time, I think. And so I don't remember everything super well. That's okay. Shocker. It's not super, yeah. I mean, I followed along fine yeah. for the most part. Um, but I think I would agree with you, Trevor, in that I would rank it 1, 3, 2 as mm. well, mm -hmm. I think. 
Yeah, no, I liked it. I'm a sucker for everybody knows community. So yeah. there was a lot of that sticking together, being family, friends, all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Vin Diesel did bring the Dom with him. Oh yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Um Okay, well, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was trying to be as hesitant as possible <laughs> in enjoying it because yeah. I don't know. Like I said, we've kind of become the MCU hate group, uh, and I accept it. And but also, they just haven't done all that great for a while. And I, I there are things in this that make me hesitate from saying great. There's some really annoying, dumb things that happen in this Their movie. Their humor was really weirdly placed. I thought there's a moment Nathan Fillion is in this, and there's a scene. That's like the entire reason they're there is just so we can laugh at Nathan Fillion. Yeah. I don't even know who you're talking about. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't we'll think there's, I can't think of a movie that you would know him from. Yeah. Um, He's a big TV guy, really. But nonetheless. He was in like Fireflies. Yeah. Have you ever saw that? No. <laughs> and it's just Firefly. Um, <laughs> My bad. I'm sorry. One of the greatest TV shows of all time that only lasts one season, but. I still never uh, seen it. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, there's there's just some things in this that are uh, a little weird. Not not weird as in like, I mean, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. There's going to be weird people, weird yeah. creatures, weird things. But just that didn't I didn't necessarily uh, necessarily like. Um, I actually thought a lot of the humor landed well, but I, these movies is, have always done a good job of that. Mm. Um, they feel less shoehorned in than... Um, the other Marvel projects, they feel more natural and more character driven than just trying to do one lines. Yeah. Um, I do think some bits went a little far. Um, the Nathan one is one of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of that area. Um, and, um, now I'm losing all the train of thought that I, that I had, but I did find <laughs> myself, um, enjoying it quite a bit. This does do a lot of emotional terrorism. Yeah. It's very purposeful and, and trying to make you sad. Um, but eventually I just gave into it. Mm -hmm. I was trying to like, I, like you, I just knew like you're purposely doing this to make me, to try to make me feel ultra uber duper sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think all in all, it works well for the entirety of like for, for, everything for the entire film and for all of these characters. So I ended up just accepting that that's what they were doing. Um, and, uh, yeah, definitely shed some tears. Also had something in my eye the entire time. That was very annoying. You cried during this. Of course. Wow. I'm not, it's not it's abnormal. Not, yeah. Uh, it wasn't I, like bawling. Well, I feel like, I feel like you and me, Tristan are always the ones that are like, yeah, I definitely cried during oh. this. I just feel like I haven't heard that from you in a while. So, oh. Well, I wasn't and crying. From, a, from an MCU movie, no I wasn't less. crying. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> I just, you know, watery eyes, tear falls. But uh, but I did also have something in my eye for a solid 45 minutes. Yeah. So I'm just like rubbing my eye, trying to get whatever it was out of my eye. Mm -hmm. so, That's annoying. Yes. Yes, it was very annoying. Speaking of annoying, mm. we had a moth in our theater. <laughs> oh, I would hate that. That was fun. It, so, like, you'd see it. It'd be either be up close to the screen, and you'd see just, like, a real shiny something, or it would get up on the projector, and, it, like, little pieces would like, be blacked out on the screen. <laughs> it was that, really funny. That kind of, yeah. How are you supposed but, to get rid of that, though? And yeah, that was I the night know. that, yeah. like, that got, that the power went off. So, it was like we had to deal with the moth for an hour. And then the power went out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you dealt with all sorts of issues. Uh, yeah. A whole entire North Rock lost its power when yeah. Trevor first went to watch this. Yeah. How? What the heck? I'm sure it's just I took video, a city uh, breaker or whatever. Yeah, something. Just, it ooh. was wild because when you turned, you could see the lights. De and I remember walking out of the theater and being like, it is so dark out here. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about lights? One thing I thought that was really stupid, mm -hmm. and it's not spoilers because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> His spaceship has lights on the front. And it just doesn't make any sense. Oh, like headlights? Why? They're like, but they're tiny little, he's in space. Like these tiny little headlights. You have to see in space. But they're not like headlights. They're like, they're they're smaller than your turn signals. They're like, <laughs> or the little tiny lights that are on like the bottom of cars when they have like mm -hmm. six yeah, yeah. lights. Mm -hmm. It's like those. <laughs> but that was the, those were the only headlights. I'm like, I mean, I guess <laughs> you're just trying to make a cool spaceship design. Yeah. 
but and I, I like, liked it. I liked the spaceship. It was just, it was all right. Yeah, I think practic practical. No, there was some, there was some uh, <laughs> practicality stuff that that didn't <laughs> make a whole yeah. lot of sense. But yeah, no, all in all, it, it was it was fine. Um, I like the way the movie started out quite a bit. Um, and I think last thing I will say is I think this movie still has an MCU issue of trying to figure out how to make their villains powerful without making them feel invincible until they're not. Mm. It still has yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, they have to make them feel so strong that nobody can beat them. And then, I mean, All the movie has they... to progress. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I feel like it does have that issue. Same thing that, you know, Ant-Man Mm -hmm. had same thing that every pretty much every marvel movie has had in the last uh probably two years yeah pretty much since the since thanos has been announced <laughs> and you kind of saw thanos in infinity war yeah um they just haven't been able to balance that because you have to and it's it's not just me saying this there's a lot of people yeah, saying it yeah. you know once you get a big threat you have to each movie you have to make it feel more threatening or it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like it you know oh well this is just a small thing compared to what they've already dealt with so what's the big deal yeah um so I do think it did a good job of making the target of the enemy uh a little bit different mm -hmm. um and 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 without spoiling mm -hmm. anything I can't say too much but uh the what makes him a bad guy and what makes him evil and stuff is a little bit different than than a normal movie and I think that's interesting and Gardens of the Galaxy kind of did that with Volume Two as as mm, well yeah. um but i i guess i'll um seed my time mm -hmm. <laughs> but i will say i i think we're all in agreement. i think it's i think one and three is actually pretty close to each other mm. um and then i think two is kind of a a, a distant third yeah. um i've never been a big fan of of two since i saw it in theaters yeah um not Which bad is, just yeah just didn't quite live up to the first and i think this does live up yeah to the first I think so too. <coughs> Which is funny because uh, I, I guess it's not. Oh, well, it's funny to me. I love eighties music, and it's this. These trilogies are supposed to move seventies, eighties, and nineties. Mm. Like creeps in this. We mentioned earlier the Beastie yeah. Boys are in this, and um, so yeah, soundtrack is is fun as always. I do think they kind of overuse it a bit. I felt that too. They went through what felt like I think eight songs. Um, and and maybe the other ones did too. It just felt like every every ten minutes, every fifteen minutes, you felt like you got another song set piece. Yeah. Um. And it just felt a little. It felt a little forced by by the end. Um. Maybe not by the end. It was just there were moments that felt forced. With, yeah. With its movie or with its music, um, overlay. I did like the moments where Rocket's singing. Yes. I liked those. That's why I like the beginning more. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's another uh, toward the end there I we get another too. moment where he's singing mm -hmm. to himself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I was thinking the same thing cuz when the first one came out, the original David Ayer Suicide Squad also came out and a big problem between the two of those <laughs> <laughs> is people liked Guardians of the Galaxy more because the music had purpose. Like if depending on the situation the, the lyrics fit what was happening. Yeah. And then you kind of got that in the second one. But yeah, in this one, it felt a lot more like, oh, you guys like that we choose classic music or whatever. Uh, so we're just going to use it often, you know? And it's kind of like that joke of Hollywood always takes the wrong, <laughs> takes the wrong uh, lesson from their movies. It's like in this one, they came up with instead of, oh, the music should serve purpose, it's people just like hearing these 90s tunes in here. Yeah. So we're just going to throw them in there. Yeah. Um, last thing I will say, um, I think they did justice to all of the characters individually very well. Um, they all had great, their own character arcs throughout the film. And then, of course, they all were together and they all had their own you know, family overcoming or whatever, but they all had their individual stuff that they were going through. And I've never been a huge fan of Nebula, and I thought she was a great addition and, and finally I, progressed past a pretty standard character hard throughout agree. kind of the, the first few movies she was too. in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, um, I don't have anything else unless you guys... Nope. Recommendation? I feel like this should be easy. Yeah, and I think you could probably 
it won't have as much weight, but you could probably see this one by itself. Like, I don't think you have to watch the first two movies. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I also recommend, um, it does get pretty creepy at times. Mm -hmm. Um, There's some nightmare fuel. Yes. There's some really dark, creepy (laughs) stuff in this. Um, this movie also is focusing through a character that, uh, uh, you may or may not expect, but not star Lord. And I thought that was a good decision. I like that. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, it's not what I was expecting, and um, yeah, it's just a good character. I mean, all they don't have a bad character in in the Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, and I think that's why it's so beloved is because it has, and they've had rotation of characters too. I mean, the original Guardians of the Galaxy was just Groot, Rocket, um, Star Lord. And kind of Gamora. I mean, she oh, and entered Drax. in later. And then Drax. Yeah. And then now they've added Nebula and Mantis. Uh, Mantis Kraglin. And, and Cosmo. Yeah, I Cosmo, Cosmo kind of. <laughs> um, but, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I do hard recommend. You got one last thing you were going to say there? Or are you just breathing? I'm just breathing. Okay. <laughs> do you have a Darth Vader? Unfortunately, I do not. <sighs> Um, we just did it for us, so thanks. Um, <laughs> we're going to take a short little break, so if you have not seen the movie yet, you can go ahead and pause it and come back when you've watched it. But if you've already seen it, um, you can keep listening. We'll talk about all the sp- spoily, spoiler, 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 spoils. Yep. Yep. I was, I was already stumbling, so I was just going <laughs> to keep going with it. Good. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. All right, we're back. We're back. Um, That's after, how you do it. <laughs> after that short little break, uh, now we're going to get into the spoiler. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, now's the time to go ahead and pause it. Go watch it because we all recommended it. Whether you've seen the movies or not, I think you're going to have fun. Yeah. Um, and maybe cry a little bit. Um, but not bad tears. And then, um, yeah, come back and listen to us talk about all the spoilers. So you've been warned. <laughs> you've been warned. <laughs> I, I have altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can we can talk about spoil all the spoil stuff. Um, we finally get raccoon backstory. Yeah. on what um, happened. Rocket, excuse you. He's Rocket Raccoon. He's on Raccoon. Yes, he is. He he decides in the he end. He accepts it at the end. I was you guys just go along with me, okay? See, you were making a joke. But I was just covering my tracks because I said the wrong thing. So, um, yeah. Well, everyone always takes your side. So, speaking of that joke, though, the the I'm not a raccoon thing. Mm-hmm. His the MCU is basically all but confirmed afterlife in the MCU oh, universe. Yeah, because yeah. that because what's her head goes to goes to oh. uh, uh, Valhalla and Thor Ragnarok or not Ragnarok and um. Love and Thunder. Yeah. And now, like, the the imagery of Rocket falling back into his body is yeah. pretty evident of, like, he was in a heaven space kind of thing. Um, I'm sure people could find ways around that. Of course, but, but I'm... It feels very. It that's interesting that and now they've included. and it also feels like well, and Black Panther does afterlife stuff too. I feel like they're also leaving it a very open afterlife because they're allowing like. Not allowing. They're like confirming a Valhalla. So yeah, that uh-huh. that religious afterlife. And then there's a conspicuous, like there's not a solidified one with raccoon. It's mm-hmm. just a yeah. afterlife. So they're just being pretty safe with it. But yeah, yeah. Um I just find it interesting. Yeah, no, that is <laughs> that is interesting. And now all of the atheists are gonna boycott MCU. <laughs> and I don't care, that's fine. Do what you want. <laughs> they're not. You're right. They might yeah. say they will, but they won't. Uh, Nobody does. Will this movie make a billion? Will it make a billion? Yeah. I doubt it. I don't know where it's at right now. I have no idea. <laughs> they, those numbers usually don't come out till Sunday. Uh, I got, oh, yeah. This is opening weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And we're recording this on Saturday, so Sunday yeah. numbers haven't hit. Because they usually take Thursday, Friday, Saturday numbers as box office weekend. Open, right. Opening weekend. Quantum um, Media did real bad, mm-hmm. from what I remember. Yeah, but so. our theater was packed. Yeah. Not a single For seat. This movie, yeah. Not a single seat was open. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's the case. And I think people are really liking it. It's got a four point two on Letterbox, mm-hmm. if you guys hadn't tell. Audience oh, score yeah. is about a ninety something. Um critic score was like an eighty one, so a little bit lower on the critic side. Yeah. Um, which I get. Yeah. I, I, I do uh, I could understand quite a bit of cr- 
um, um, critiquing yeah, um, sure. from from movie people, but um, as just a movie fan or a movie moron myself, <laughs> um, it is just a lot of dumb fun. Yeah. Um, and it and it does a really good job of of pulling on your emotions. All of Rocket stuff, like I said, that they they finally dig in the background mm-hmm. uh, of was um, extremely sad, but it it made sense for his character. I think quite a bit and i like that i like how we get into it with the beginning stuff with the med pack and then that's yeah. how they mm-hmm. find out that he has the kill switch i thought that was really clever yeah, yeah. i agree he does do a lot of technical stuff all around so i, I don't hey yeah it's that it, i did think about that it's <laughs> weird that it's like nothing like this has happened to you yet yeah <laughs> uh but it's okay but yeah um, and i guess he's all he's all always with group but you know yeah, and that beginning fight was nice and brutal. Yes, um, except for a little alien or not bronze. alien, uh, the thing Groot walking around on his head with his little spider legs. Yeah. Ew, yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. Although I did like when he re- how he rebuilds himself, how he got like the shell. I yeah. assume that's what you were talking about. How too. we saw s- s- a preconceived thing, like we've already seen Groot grow before, and this time we saw it all happen within one movie, and it was different. And I thought, uh, I like that. Yes, that too. But I was thinking specifically of the fight that he's in, where when he and Quill are back to back, there's yeah. parts where he like gotcha. grows like a shield around yeah. him mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. That's the, that's more what I was talking gotcha. about. But, well, yeah, but that I, too, I'd forgotten about yeah, that. Yeah, I liked how they, like, in in volume two, you, you saw him grow from a little baby to a teenager, and you saw that full progression. In this movie, you saw, like, he obviously didn't have baby tendencies or anything, but you saw a complete regrowing of the body all throughout this movie alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Because the other one it takes. Because you also see him grow with an Infinity War in Endgame, I think. Mm-hmm. He's so. a teenager in Endgame. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Four is Nightmare Fuel. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, she's creepy. A, the, a bunny with spider legs and no mouth. Yeah. Chomp chomp. Because like I was thinking, I was like, why does she have the thing over her mouth? But then I was like, oh, because the rabbit's mouth probably isn't capable of speech, so it's probably been like ripped open oh, and stop. like made. To, oh, okay. Yeah. Is a raccoon's mouth able to? Speak? Well, like they're bigger. Those are bigger mouths. Sure. And so that that's just what I was thinking. Yeah. But but the, that was the creepy part of this movie mm-hmm. is that's the true. animal mutilated test subject stuff mm-hmm. um and all of them are super creepy um but i think they offset it very well with having them be with how friendly they are yeah very yeah. bubbly personalities mm-hmm. um and they're all friends yeah until that all not. die okay although that scene where where four is saying uh she says four teeth rocket leave now or something like that. she's repeating that that like that scared me i just that incessant uh, that was a lot anyway yeah. sorry i'm that's the thing I've been thinking for like the most about for this movie is <laughs> that line delivery was just oof. I couldn't figure out what she was saying. Mm. So that, that's a bummer. Yeah. This movie also has a probably good because it's a repetitive <laughs> theme. <laughs> it wouldn't haunt me. Yeah. <laughs> a repetitive theme of stupidity. What do you mean? The movie has a re- like it just uh, they continuously call back on how stupid everyone is. Oh yeah, mm. sure. Um Although we do get a really good conversation with Nebula Mantis and, and Drax, Drax about it. Yeah, yeah, that Drax forgets. Yes. But then, <laughs> I love that he's calling all the kids just morons. And <laughs> Listen up, idiots. <laughs> and the fact that he knows their language, I thought was a perfect yeah. little yeah. nugget. Um, he's like, you didn't ask me. Which is valid. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the one thing I did not like about the movie was the perfect animal people yeah um oh, i didn't sure. like the design i didn't like yeah. the, the the thought Half process of them looked like they were like just wearing animal costumes they or were. like animal masks yeah. but yeah. then others of them looked more realistic i yeah. don't know so I, I just there wasn't really any anything along that line that i thought made sense um, I didn't think it practically made sense for the story of him trying to create this perfect race or not yeah. race. Um, a society. Too, yeah. yeah. Uh, perfect species. He's trying to create a utopia. He's trying to, well, he's trying to be God by creating a species and then, you know, being their God or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't, I, I didn't really, 
ever find the fact that he's making like turning animals into the perfect evolution of themselves mm-hmm. would would all in all really just turn them into humanoids. Yeah. Um and I, I think, just yeah that I didn't really that fit with me. Like I didn't I didn't think that made a whole lot of sense. And they tried to use a lot of high science nonsense words to mm-hmm. try to make it feel smart, mm-hmm. but it was, I was thinking about that too. Just kind of dumb. And um how did you know about the lubrication, overflow, oxidation, yeah. entrapment, whatever? Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's a lot of made-up words that you had to hey, memorize. you went to school for like 15 years. Can you come just make some science-y words for us? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then practically, it didn't make sense for a film set. It, it just, it it didn't look great. Hmm. Um, it, are we, I, are I we like, talking about... The the like town yeah there and stuff okay, the town yeah, people I, agree. I I like I it looked like something out what's the one we saw with Harry Styles <laughs> don't worry darling it kind of yeah. looked like that yeah <laughs> and and like I I like the fact that they tried using practical effects like that's I sure. I appreciate that but just sometimes it doesn't work and it doesn't look good um, especially when Rocket looks extremely good in this movie Cosmo looks really good mm. um, Groot looks really good so like the core of the people that all look very different look pretty good and then you go to this town and it all looks like people in costumes yeah it just doesn't doesn't mesh so they didn't mesh well um i didn't really care for the bit either um the whole bit with the inside the house and trying to speak and and it was all so slow yes uh i understand maybe they were trying to take a break Maybe, yeah. Um, which sometimes movies need. It, yeah. it was pretty fast-paced, and a lot of things were happening. You need to take a break. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just I, I, did, I just didn't care for the bit, didn't care for the village, yeah. um, and mainly just because it just didn't look like it fit uh, the movie. Yeah. I like the idea of, like, going to a counter-Earth <laughs> or whatever. I didn't mind that premise. And I think it's funny that his idea of a perfect society has – like a replica of earth as the base <laughs> yeah that was kind of weird that was a little, a little strange to think just, about you know james gunn thinking humans are superior to everything <laughs> else in, in the galaxy we do get our first f-bomb i think yep. in the mcu in this uh, which open the kinda, fucking door yep which kind of caught me off guard <laughs> but oh I, I didn't even i didn't even bat an eye i didn't really realize it was well that's said. you i did and i was like Oh. Why? Oh, a lot of children mm-hmm. watch this movie. <laughs> it is PG thirteen though, so yep. I mean they. I mean, on. one. I mean, yeah. yeah, I get it, but like, couldn't it have been in like a more intense yes. situation? Yeah. They decided like, that was my thing. I'm like, yeah. okay, in certain movies like that, I'm sure that would be funny, but for the first one to be about opening a car door. Yeah. Like they decided to make it a joke instead of making it a serious yeah. Yeah. moment. Like when they're trying to get into like the spaceship door when it's when it's lifting off. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Or a moment where they thought um, Rocket was going to die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like don't something fucking leave me or yeah. something like that. Oh man, when, when Chris Pratt screams no yeah. twice, that's, mm-hmm. that I think is the not the best. His performances, I think, it's the best we've seen him act. Yes. In, in this, did uh, were you guys going into this knowing whether or not Rocket was going to survive the movie or not? Okay, I, I figured he would. Squat about this movie. So they there was a lot of uh, Rocket, um, um, marketing mm-hmm. for this movie. Yeah, uh, and now we know why. It's because the movie is centered through Rocket. Yeah. But a lot of people were taking that as in they think this is going to be the movie that rocket dies and it's going to be an emotional moment that you know whatever and so this is like a goodbye to his character so they're marketing him well blah 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 mm-hmm. um because bradley uh cooper cooper who plays Ro- or voices rocket like he hasn't really done any press for mm. gardens of the galaxy for the first two and then he was for this one and mm. and just posters with rocket on. anyways and so a lot of people thought this might be the end so i kind of came in with that oh, okay. so i was kind of like I felt like that would have there been a, with him, like, or like, w- well, in that moment when Chris is screaming, mm-hmm. no, like yeah. I thought maybe that was that the, was it. Uh, yeah, that's what yeah. I was saying. Oh, yeah, oh, like oh. you were there with him, like oh, there with the, him. Okay, I see. What in you the mean. moment, yes. with him, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, so they did a great job making it feel real. I felt like that. I was in, in my conscious or my uh, uh, practical brain. I was like, this would be a really, like, this would be a dumb way to do it mm-hmm. to kill Rocket. 
that like he gets shot at the very beginning. They're trying to save him the entire time, and it just doesn't it just work. Doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't also hate it as a person that wants something that's kind of real. Think in about movies. how dark yeah. this ending would have been if this became a revenge movie rather yeah. than a let's save everyone thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it would have been <laughs> tense. I'm glad it was. Oh, wasn't. hey, there's like a Full Metal Alchemist bit in this the the pig and the owl what aren't they uh aren't they uh 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 chimera Chimera in full metal those two guys one of them turns into a pig and then the other guy i think turns in i don't know if it's an owl but there's um no there's dog there's snake there's um bull or like ox um, but yeah, there's there's quite a few. What? Just naming off. No, chimeras? I forget that. Oh. I forget that you say bull for bull. I just said the same thing you did. <laughs> I said it two different ways. No, nope, you said the same thing twice. Anyway, war pig kind of made me think of. <laughs> sure. Anyway, sure. so I don't Hog. think there's any connection, but yeah, that was kind of a cool thing to see. Uh, there's bull. <laughs> bull. It's a, it's a bull. Bull. I'm not saying bull. You're saying bowl. No, I'm not saying bull. <laughs> I'm saying bull. She thinks I'm saying the oh, same no, thing. I'm, I'm aware of the conversation. I'm just trying to process. She has always <laughs> thought that I say bull, B U L L B O W L. Like a bull you eat out of instead of a yeah. bull. Yeah. And I'm saying B U L L. It kills her. Her brain can't put can't can't do it. So and she or maybe your me. mouth can't do it. Nope. I'm saying them, I'm saying I'm different. Anyway. Uh, I thought it was funny that the the <laughs> four friends with Rocket, uh-huh. uh, he's like, oh, you're not coming with me to the new world because you're just a bunch of d- disgusting looking creatures that are, I experiment on. But his armada of the nastiest <sighs> yeah. looking hybrid I, cyborg thing. I kind of thought that too, but I think it was more of like... Um, they're not going to be living in the society. Mm. Oh, and I thought that too. Yeah. I'm with uh, you all now. Yeah. I think it was like, he's creating a society where they're, like they're all living. And he's like, you guys can't live with them because you're gross. Yeah. Um, which is true. They are. Um, I, speaking of gross. <laughs> are they not gross? No, they're gross. I don't I, disagree. That tusk uh, manatee or. I actually was? didn't mind him so much. It was, it was the arms of the otter. Oh, the otter. Yeah. That was the. Mechanical arms. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the rabbit was obviously the worst. Everyone. Yes. Did, yeah. I don't think anybody's going to say anything different. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, that scene where they throw him in post-surgery was pretty rough. What? Where they throw him in post-surgery. They, he oh. Has, right after the surgery. Yeah, and he's they, shaking. Yeah, yeah, he's shaking, uh-huh. and, and he doesn't uh, know what's happening. That's rough. Little rocket. Yeah. 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 Scars on his head mm. from a fresh brain transfer or something. Yeah. Something. Who knows what? You know, we, we don't really know. Um and just or the scene where like the it's showing the memory mm. and all the guardians are watching seeing, it. Oh, yeah. that's rough. Yeah. 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 Uh, but then they're like, well now we get it. <laughs> why? Yeah. yeah. Why yeah. he never said anything because he Yeah, because this is and awful. Why, yeah, how he is <laughs> why he is the way he is. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, this is obviously a anti uh animal uh cruelty movie yeah. or anti animal testing. Mm-hmm. Um which I don't know if a, well, America probably does need to hear, but the people that do it won't care. But yeah. uh we get a little there's a little scene in this that reminded me of Tenant. Uh they're trying to get into the spaceship and then Groot and Quill fly by in the screen. Yeah. That I had to watch this twice <laughs> because power cut out on my first showing. But going I so I watched that scene twice and I cracked up both times. I, I don't know why, but just I thought the, for sure they were gonna hear him. Yeah, <laughs> I thought they were gonna like Hooker be like, uh what? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. liked that uh that uh does he go by Pete or Peter? They call him Quill. Okay. Well he, they said qu- Pete a lot. That's in what this I movie, thought. Though. Oh, yeah. okay. But uh I, I really like that Quill did have a plan mm. and just didn't decide to disclose it with anybody other than Groot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't even hate it. Like, I think it's bad writing or anything. Uh, it's just like, I think they've made Quill up enough as a character where like, it just feels on brand for Quill 
to just assume everyone knows what Quill is doing without actually saying it. Yeah. Um, and so, because then we get another uh, scene like that in the end when he doesn't quite make it off the ship, and he and then because that and then he mm. goes and he goes in for a sweet little. I'm going to escape this way instead kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think at that moment he actually did mean to make it look cool and he failed. Yeah. And I, I thought he was dead when his face bubbled up, bubbled up. I was like, oh man, this guy's I was toast. like, we just went through this whole movie thinking that Rocket was going to die. And now Quill's the one that's going to die. And Stupid. very dumbly. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I 100% thought that silver dude, superior race, whatever mm, you want to yeah. Uh, the he, sovereign. Sovereign, that's what yeah. it was. I knew it started with an S, and I didn't think it was superior, but mm. um, I knew he was going to go in. And we get a little, a nice mm. little I hated that painting. so much. <laughs> yeah. The creation painting where he's... With God and Adam. Because uh, yeah. his name is Adam. Yeah. Do you get it? <laughs> it was very dumb. I thought... I thought Stupid. Yeah. yeah. That was, I thought that was a very dumb shot. Mm. Um, but... Whatever. It was a quarter of a second. But it's just like, why? It, it wasn't needed yeah. at all. Yeah. And He's like, zipping around for the rest of the movie. Why is this and it wasn't slow? Practical. <laughs> and, he, yeah. and why is he reaching out like that? Yeah. yeah. Practically, I didn't. Yeah, and his mother, who was a fairly prominent in the second film, uh, she also gets a pretty unceremonious end. And they're supposed to be these very advanced creatures mm -hmm. and dies by just a standard explosion. Yeah. So I also True. thought that was weird. Yeah. I don't remember her at all. I also don't remember. She's in the beginning <laughs> and then she she's in the end credit. Actually, so is Adam. Adam's in his cocoon at the end gotcha. credit scene no. and he he emerges like so. or gotcha. the the cocoon cracks yeah. or like I said, oh, we've yeah. both did we only watched volume <laughs> 2 once. Yeah, yeah. I think I did watch it twice, but it the second time I watched it, I think it was like Trent watching it. So it was mm -hmm. just like on, and I was yeah. like, mm, whatever. In the area. Yeah. yeah. I'll I'll watch when we, because I think volume two has some cool moments. Yeah. Because volume two is the one where they have baby Groot that's running around yes. with the detonator. That's the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like oh, that, no. No, that's toward the end. That's towards the yeah, end. Yeah. At the beginning, he's running around his baby Groot yeah. with the earbuds for the song when they're mm -hmm. killing that big monster. But the mm -hmm. Abolith, which makes a return yep. in this, three of them. And that's kind of. I didn't really like how that wrapped. I didn't like how it started. That's that's what I meant. Like, I don't like how they escaped that situation. It felt just a little weak. Yeah. Like, it just... These are supposed to be the things that just kill. Um, like, the it was obviously that those things were down there that were supposed to be, like, rancors. Yeah. Like this is what mm -hmm. kills our, like, sub... Or... Yeah prisoners or whatever like that they kill them and they survive by not attacking it yeah and i know it made an explanation i'm just I, you wouldn't have non-violent creatures be the thing that you're gonna you know right just doesn't really make sense for me so i just didn't like the way that that all progressed yeah but what 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 i meant when i said started was when they get thrown into that pit initially there's like a grading that apparently there's just a group of kids running around <laughs> that are not in cages. Oh uh, yes, 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 yes. So yes, there's yes, a grade yeah. that they talk through, and then when the the thing lifts, when like the, all the walls of that pit they're in lift, they're just in this big empty space. I thought it lowered them. Does it lower them? I it might, and maybe I missed that. But I I think it was kind of a lower, and then it gotcha. went up. I, that, that's what I that's what I feel. That's kind of what I thought. But you're probably right. Yeah, but but it also doesn't make sense. There are random ones that weren't in cages. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The kiddos, the kids should have been in cages. Clip it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Oh um, man. I liked the, the I liked the, and that's what I like the the kids the hmm? the more superior. Jub jub. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like they were a, like that practically like that made sense much more than the animal things. And so, like, it just made me hate the animal evolution world thing even right. more. Yeah. It also didn't explain how they created a world. But that's okay. You don't need to explain everything. Heck, I know. I just randomly thought about it, and then it just blows it all up. Yeah. Which you knew was going to happen. 
Yeah. Um, and so that does bring me to our main villain. That is what I like about this villain is that he isn't just a standard Marvel villain that's just trying to kill people. Mm. Like he he has a purpose if he wants to create a perfect uh, species. Mm-hmm. And he is extremely evil in the way that he's willing to do that. And he'll just murder an entire world of people. He created them. Yeah. And so he feels like, well, I created you. I can end you. Um, mm-hmm. Good old mother line there. <laughs> um, but, like, obviously it's not true. Like, uh, you're, yeah. just because you create a species doesn't give you necessarily the right to just kill them all. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I keep having something and then losing it. So. Keep going. I liked all of the tension with Gamora and Peter. Peter, yeah, I was curious how they were gonna tackle this, and I'm I'm really glad Gamora ends up going back with the Ravagers at the end, and that they don't even really have closure, any kind of yeah. That I mean, there's it, there's no it, kind of romantic thing that well, looks like it's gonna happen. I she think has it, moments, I think it progresses it. I think it it's, does progress. I think it, yeah. it's showing that Gamora was, not them is getting like, back together, but them and maybe getting back together. Like it, it for me, it looked like she towards the last act, she started to understand how she could have fallen for right. Quill. Sure, and so she's becoming more acceptant to it. But she's not going to just like, oh, I see, and then just like run straight into yeah. it. Right. So that kind of like it, it kind of leaves it as a a possible. Well, I, possibility. I, I didn't. I see it as like. At the beginning of the movie, she's like, "Absolutely not! You're deplorable. I can't even like. I don't even want to look at you." Yeah. And she's like denying everything that that is true. Everything that did happen. Everything yeah. that she did feel and he did feel. She's denying all of it. And then at the end, she's like, "Okay, that." That was still this other person that I don't really know about, but I'm accepting that that happened. That's mm-hmm. what I, that's how I took, yeah. took it. I saw it kind of as she's like, she is her own, like she, she is her own person, um, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, So I, I saw it mainly in the moments of with Rocket, um, when she sees Rocket like sitting yeah. there and I think she processes like what, all of these people are willing to do just for one creature. And then when they thought rocket died, um, there's a moment where she stares Mm -hmm. at Quill and it looked like a more like romantic gaze. Mm. In my opinion, it was a like seeing the compassion and the love that he has just for a friend. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think she longs for that and she does get it. I think with the scavenger people, um, but it was just that moment. And then, uh, willing to help later on and and all of that that I I did like that she didn't jump right back in though yes yeah, yeah. like no, I, when I totally they're all agree. doing the dog pile hug mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah she even she even there. walks away yeah she yeah. and she but waits it's not in like a bad way no no yeah I, uh, yeah I'm but just, she yeah she distances herself yes yeah, yeah. For sure. I thought Quill was gonna call out for her to join but oh mm. yeah I liked I also did like that um, Adam is that his name Bronze Boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna call Adam, him Bronze Adam Boy. Warlock. Mm-hmm. I like his name, Bronze Boy, better. Bronze but, Boy. <laughs> um, I like that he hugged in, and I, w- I was definitely like, oh yeah, he's he's gonna be a new guardian. Oh yeah, mm. like mm. it's a perfect fit. I didn't yeah. expect one of the the kids, yeah, <laughs> to be one. Oh yeah, that was um, mm. obviously we don't know exactly what happens, but I mean yeah. they are this. We get a small time jump. Scientifically yeah. modified, um, humanoid. Yeah. That yeah. obviously is going to have some sort of one of her eyes is two, crazy. Yeah, two different eyes. Yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, um, Hulk Groot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. He's just a monster now. <laughs> dope. And that's that's kind of interesting. It the Groot in this makes me feel like he's like a young like this is prime Groot. Like this is him mm. as like a young adult. And the Groot we got in Guardians One was more like older yeah like a little bit more age so i just don't know what to think with I, it. Am. I i just i feel like they just wanted a different design so they just made it be and I, um, I really dig this one yeah and i do too i, I like, like i don't too, mind yeah. that they decided to pick a different design than the first one i just don't know how it logically makes sense sure and it could just be he grows so yeah. he could just have grown different this time well and, and I, I, think I would I, accept that explanation that's I fine i think i've heard 
and maybe I'm making this up, but I feel like I've read somewhere that the the Groot we have now is not the original Groot. This is technically his offspring. Mm, huh. Interesting. Yeah. Which but I, I could sense. Yeah, I I could be wrong, but I feel like I remember reading that somewhere. Um I on another note, I remember what I was gonna say. I didn't realize that Rocket basically murdered him halfway through when he gets to his face oh, and tears it all up. Oh, you didn't? Oh. He, yeah, because he he runs away and the high evolutionary is just on the floor. What a crazy name to just spe- high evolutionary. It's not yeah. Yeah. weird to say in conversation. I, uh, um, I for sure knew that he had just tore him up. I thought we were going to see like, you know, maybe he's missing an eye. Maybe his like, he's got like a, a scar around his, like just a real scarred up face. Yeah. I didn't expect his face to just be gone. <laughs> that was very, it, it went, that scene went on for a while. Yeah. Like he was messing him up for a while. And was I was on his face. Yes. Yes. I yeah. like the, you know, we, he, I, also he don't corn, like, go ahead. I don't like that. The other two, um, floor and, um, Teeps. 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 Yeah. We're telling him to stop. I was mm. like, this is a highly evil person. Yeah. Like, that was about I mean, to just incinerate everybody. Yeah. Or all four of you, at least. Mm-hmm. So. Um, They're also very naive. That's true. Yeah. I also, I wish there would have been some sort of closure with uh, Rocket where, like, because he feels like it's his fault mm-hmm. the entire time when it's. Like obviously not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lila kind of says something when they I didn't think that she what really a did. Weird line though. The the there are the hands that guide you, and then there are the hands that guide the hands. Yeah. I know. What I was does like, that even mean? <laughs> is that supposed to be profound? Because I don't understand. And I thought they were going towards something of like there's the like there's the the thing that made you, and then there's like. The family you have and the family you choose. I think that's what it's supposed to be. And it did not land. It, what's funny was, I so I, like, during a movie, I'll record quotes that I put in my reviews on Letterboxd. Mm. And that was one of them that I wrote down. And in the moment I wrote that, I was like, oh, wow, that could be, really be a good one. And then later I was reading it. I was like, what even the crap <laughs> is this? <laughs> You're like, wait a second. Uh, well, she <laughs> says it like it's such an amazing thing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, like... <laughs> Profound wisdom if you just she's read it, giving it just to him, make sense. and then I remember thinking, and I'm like, she's so confident saying that, but I have no idea what she means. You know what uh, to say? Confidence is ninety percent of the equation. Yes. If you say it with confidence, that's it means what something. Marvel thinks apparently. The other one I had was a uh, uh, the one I picked was a line I, re- I really liked. It's uh, it's uh, uh, Rocket says the important thing is that we're all okay, and then the way the Nebula says Rocket at the that's. Very good. Mm. Yeah. But then, <laughs> the fine, we'll kill one stupid guy who no one loves. Yeah. <laughs> now you're just making it sad. <laughs> it's pretty good. But yeah. Crux the um, Destroyer was good in this. Who? Crux? Drax. Drax. Drax? <laughs> Pulling my Mass Effect names out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Crux is a. It's the second time that's happened, I think. There's another Mass Effect character. Garrus, maybe? With, maybe. Doesn't matter. Um, um, yeah, Drax. The, the thing I was going to end with was I do like. You know, the high evolutionary kind of corners Rocket and then does his little gravity thing to him, which the gravity boots coming back was yep. nice. I dug that. And then, So I didn't even know that was a gravity thing the entire movie. He has a throwaway line of okay. like, now I've mastered gravity or something like that. Gotcha. I did yeah. not catch that. It just seemed like unlimited power. Mm-hmm. So that makes mm-hmm. a little bit, I guess, a little bit more sense. Yeah. But it still feels like copy, like a cop out. Yeah, I control yeah. gravity. Like, what does that even what mean? Is, I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. But I did like the whole Guardians crew yes. shows up and beats the ever living crap out of him. That yep. was pretty great. It was a it was a very good combo series. Yes, like a uh-huh. like where it, it shot really well. In the hallway scene too was another one. Like the fight scenes in this no were shot. Sleep. <laughs> no. The the action scenes like that were all done pretty well um yeah, yeah. i didn't really like the organic I didn't place either. one or really that whole bit was a little off I, the, um, it was the weird. chris pratt stuff was pretty funny because we get a payoff of like oh she is into me but everything else yeah was very look we got nathan fillion again <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did like the uh you're deeply in love with him but romantis makes the yeah yes the guard oh yes that's good i and thought then it was the, gonna uh, come back later 
The yeah, I thought it should have too. I th- I want I think Mantis's power I think wears, it wears off. off after uh, a minute. Yeah, 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 I agree. Because there were multiple th- times where oh. she did s- she said something and then they came back to reality a little bit later. And so. then in two, she has to continuously help put ego to sleep. Mm. Yeah, but I guess that's a little different. Uh, yeah, but how did uh, she told Drax to forget? Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just because it was so. And he continues to forget what she said, so. They would never be like, oh, it says, you're Drax the Destroyer, but you're really a dad. Yeah. Oh, uh, that got me. That was uh-huh. so. The little monkey noises. <laughs> you mean robot? Beep, Whatever. Beep, yeah. beep, he was beep, 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 He was beep. doing the robot. And I, he was. Oh, man, and I love Mantis's laugh after he smacks it. It's yeah. such a pure, innocent mm-hmm. thing. And, oh, man. Yeah. It's the good. dad. The dad line definitely. Got me a little bit. That was good. Uh, we get to see Michael Rooker, I think, back. Yondu was in it this for just a couple seconds. Or was it the Spike? Yeah, the he's the, yeah, the apparition, the Kraglin, the blue guy, who's just like, follow your heart. And then Kraglin can just use the whistle. <laughs> oh, I think he said, Mer- use Mer- your Mer- heart. Mer- use your heart. Merle. That's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, Mer- yeah. Yeah, Merle. Merle. But he had, uh, I, he had been saying that. For a long time, so gotcha. just he finally I, like finally allowed it and to. It felt it felt good. Yes. It yeah. didn't feel like it was just a switch. Yeah, Which, yeah, because it and he he's failed at that for a movie and a half now. So. <laughs> I love that. It's Cosmo about time he learned. Has the she has the the mental she telekinesis or whatever. Where did Who? where did she come from? Cos- I think she just showed up at this because we were Who? checking Cosmo, Cos- the dog, oh, the dog. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we were checking the holiday special because n- neither of us watched it, mm-hmm. and she's not in that. And okay. so I think she's just here. That's fine. Yeah, and I think she's a great addition. Cosmo, he, she, she, she's just a character in, in the comic books. So mm. it's a that eventually becomes a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So it, weird. It just seemed like she had been found or been a part of the group at some point between these movies, yeah. which I don't think is like that big of a stretch because she's also not supposed to, she's not a main character so right. it's fine yeah her, a, she, and i like her and craggling together they they made a good a good team yeah. or the good bad pair. dog bit went on maybe one or two many times but yeah it's a good payoff though yeah it's just every time you just get a 30 second bit of how she, he won't say <laughs> won't take, it, won't back. take it, back. it back but i like i like the the line he says, I think it, it's written well when he says the, uh, yeah, you know, I would, I would agree with you if she wasn't such a bad dog or something like mm. that. And then yeah. she's like, oh, the pain, it hurts so bad. And yeah. yeah. Well, you loved it. So it hits. I it, do. It I, was, yeah. <laughs> I think it's fine. It's, it's, yeah. It's just personally, I just like it. Sure. But, no, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other real things we, we want to chat about? I think we. Quills on earth now. Mm. Yeah. He's back on Terra, which I I didn't mind with his with his grandpa. Yeah, who does not look ninety three? No, <laughs> you want to talk about plastic surgery? Yeah. I'm just kidding. Looks like he's maybe seventy. He's like a younger yeah. actor than. And maybe that was a throwaway age. line, and he's not actually supposed to be ninety. But yeah, Quill is 30s. at least in his at least thirty five. I also yeah. did not understand what he was talking about at the end. What do you mean? Having to mow somebody's yard? Oh, I think it's a. It's just like he. I think it's suburban drama. Yeah, oh, like okay. his his grandpa's asking if he'll mow his neighbor's lawn because his neighbor is too old to mow the lawn. But then there's his they son, son uh-huh. that's is living yeah. at their house and is forty five okay. and won't mow the. That lawn. makes more sense. I just, I, I just heard. Yes. Able bodied forty five <laughs> year old who won't mow his own lawn, and I'm like, why is this? What's going on? I uh. And we do get a Star Lord will return, yeah, uh, uh, a bumper at the end of this. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we're getting another Guardians movie. Yes. He could just be in the next yeah. Avengers or something, sure. and so, which I think is I, I honestly do think they'll continue with the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I, I, think I, so I, I, hmm. I think it'll just be the new group. Yeah, and and, and they it get, won't be and they James just call Gunn. it the new Guardians. No big deal. Yeah, yeah. Um. Or it'll just be Guardians of the Galaxy and have a different sub name. Yeah, um, sure. Because these other ones have been Volume One, Volume Two, Volume Three, so right. you could do something else and swindle it. 
Um, because I don't hate the group. No. Uh, at all. Um, I don't know how I feel about the new Avengers, but I don't mind the new Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. So. Um, speaking of the new Avengers, just to cut, not to divert super a lot, but uh, I think the new Captain America movie is two movies away. Uh, we get the Marvels next, and then I think we get... <laughs> Oh yeah. Then I think we get a that trailer made me. I thought it was interesting. Grab my nine from my closet. <gasps> oh my god! Don't say that. I thought it looked awful, and that really sucks. Be going from this, yeah, to that. What do you expect? Fun fact about a uh, 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 the, the new hell is Nick Captain Fury America doing? one though. Yeah. Um, Liz Tyler or Liv Tyler and. Uh, I can't think of his name. He's the guy from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? But they were George both Clooney. no, they were both in The Incredible Hulk from oh. from uh, from yeah. two thousand and eight, yeah. and they uh, hello. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? And they uh, I popped my neck yeah, and they're head. they're both <laughs> signed up to be in this. Tim Blake Nelson Liv and Liv Tyler. Tyler are both signed. I think they're both in uh, the new Captain America. So that's and. They're not doing the title. They, they dropped the New World Order as the gotcha. title, so I don't know what the new subtitle is going to be, but a gotcha. little news for you there. Movie news. Movie news. <laughs> um, well, I don't really have too much else. Um, like I said, I don't. I, I thought the how, he got he gets taken down really easily. Yeah, he did. he is at the end of the day. I did kind of because he is just a man. He's got his gravity stuff, but yeah. He's but just it's just they dude. make him out to be this. I'm just a bill. I thought you were gonna say something else. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. Th is this a good? Is this a good wrap up to the trilogy? Do you think? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think this is a I great agree. conclusion to yeah. to the movies. Uh, a lot better than <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder. Yeah. <laughs> My God. I don't know that I agree that this is as has advertisements have been declaring. I don't think this is better than Endgame. But I do think that it is it's, one of the better advertisements. Ones we've got. Yeah, I, I know. And it was like the Rolling Stone or something that, <laughs> that said that. They will. Marvel will never top Infinity War in game. Yeah, it's just the way it is. Yeah, it's you're not going to just and don't like. You can try to make something epic. Just yeah. don't have your don't have your plan be. We are going to make some like this is going to be better than in game. Don't mm -hmm. market it as such because. You're putting, <laughs> you're just putting way too much pressure on a movie. Um, and not that, not even that I think in game or Infinity War are the greatest movies of all time. It's just a perfect wrap yep. to a twenty two. It's the long, culmination of ten years of work. <laughs> yeah, um, and done well. Yeah. like it's and they're and they're really well done movies. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Um, okay, ready for ratings. So, foe, foe. Three seventy-five. Oh, I think this is between four and four and a half. But nice. I think right now, I'm sitting wow. at four. I was sitting at three and a half about halfway through the movie, and then it kind of squeaked its way up uh, as it went on. I think I felt kind of the same way. I was between three and a half and four. Yeah, but it it wraps up really nicely. Yes, I agree. So right now it's at four, but uh, with a rewatch, it'll go up or down, but probably probably not down. Stay right probably. Here. Did any of us have this movie? No, I don't think I don't so. Think so. Oh. Yeah, I think we stayed away from the MCU. <laughs> mm. um, What's the next movie that someone has? I don't, I don't have my phone. So. Well, and we were I looking at mind. movies that are coming out next week, and it's like The Book Club and then something else. Yeah, the I, Book Club 2. Oh, sorry. Well, then I thought that the already next came chapter. out, but... Oh. Or maybe but this is the final chapter. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, um, thank you guys so much for listening. We will do something next week. Um, I'm pretty sure I... I uh, already had one planned because I had been looking through them. But oh, um, my phone is what we record on for video, so I can't uh, I can't look <laughs> at my uh, notes. So um, make sure to stop in next week to hear of all, all of our thoughts. And thank you guys so much for listening to our review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Thank you, and have a good one. Hey, moron! You talking to me? You talking to me? There seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? <laughs> what an idiot!
what to expect. I'm the Movie Moron. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Don't call me stupid. All right, to call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people. I've known sheep that could outwit you. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs> man. You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, none taken.